Hey everyone! Well, I got a couple of comments on both my rants and my complete creation video series from some viewers who feel that they've solved the information problem for evolution. Now, one of them suggested, for example, that some bacteria, by a mistake, sometimes reproduce two copies of their DNA, their genetic code. He also goes on to suggest that perhaps the second copy might have an error in it. Voila, you have new information. Well, just recently, I got a brand spanking new phone book in the mail. By a surprising error and coincidence, I happened to get two copies of the exact same phone book. Now, do we have any new information? No, we have two copies of the exact same information. We have gained no new information. Now, if this phone book happened to have a new entry with a name and a phone number in it, that would be new information. But that would also require intelligence, wouldn't it? But having two copies of the same phone book is not more information. That's like Obama giving us two copies of his fake birth certificate. Has he provided us with any new information? Ah, uh, no. But let's say for a second that the second telephone book actually has an error in it. There was an A that inadvertently got inserted in the name Johnson. So instead of Mr. Johnson, we now have Mr. Johansson. Is that new information? No, that is a loss of information. Because now we have an error in the information. We've now lost our entry for Mr. Johnson. We now have an entry which is incorrect for Mr. Johansson. Now, of course, one day I try and go and call Mr. Johansson, find that the number doesn't work, it actually goes to Mr. Johnson. Well, you already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix the error in the book. I'm going to scribble it out, but no, 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 Johnson, not Johansson. This is a lot like what actually goes on in our DNA. We have very complex systems in our bodies that do nothing but run around and look for errors in our DNA to fix them. Now, endonuclease runs down the backbone of the DNA looking for errors. When it finds one, it cuts the DNA, marks it, and exonuclease removes it. Polymerase comes along with the correct nucleotide. And then ligase comes along and welds the backbone back together. Oh, and did I mention that the plans for these robots actually come from the DNA? So, which came first? The DNA which contains the plans for the robots which maintain the DNA? Or the robots which are needed to maintain the DNA so we have plans for the robots? And the, see, the thing is, with this protective repair system built in, evolution can't happen because it removes the errors and evolution thrives on these mutations or errors. But if you remove the repair system, then the errors accumulate so rapidly that they kill the organism. And of course, they kill off any evolution that may have happened in that organism at the same time. So you can't win either way, evolutionarily speaking. With the repair system in place, evolution doesn't work. Remove the repair system, evolution doesn't work. You don't have to worry about a chimpanzee turning into a human, or even worse, a human turning into a chimpanzee. You'll be dead long before you get there. Now, if you truly believe in evolution, and you truly believe that mutations are the driving force behind evolution, then you probably want to move to Chernobyl. There's lots of mutations going on there. In fact, that'd be really cool. You could, like, get superpowers and become, like, a superhero or something. You know, get bit by a radioactive spider and become, like, Spider-Man or something. Or if you get a whole bunch of mutations, maybe you can become like one of the X-Men. I hear housing is really cheap near Chernobyl. 